Okay, so we are back uh, on our weekly segment. Um, so, in a nutshell, kind of, uh, how did uh, did you get any other follow-up questions from uh, from our last discussion? Uh, actually, not so much. No, not so much. Just no. mostly during our live live uh, feed. So I got there's a people a couple people that asked some questions about. Um, <laughs> some nutrition stuff they wanted us to kind of talk about some other stuff so kind of if you go on if you're live with us at any point feel free to to ask any questions um if for some reason we we we, we might not be able to talk about it in this exact segment however down the road we can maybe do something on like nutrition supplements and things like that um and i know i, I we talked about after the show that we we're going to hopefully bring on some guests and uh, kind of topic uh, cover some other topics that maybe we're not experts in, so that would be yeah, kind of cool definitely. to do. Um, so as we start getting people coming in, let's talk about we. So Whitney sent an, sent me an article, and something that um, we're going to discuss today has to do with actually you discuss it because you picked out this article, and it's, I think it's a really it's a very it's an article they can you know it's for athletes but yeah. it's for also for just general population so it kind of discuss why you put, pick this topic and maybe in an idea as to what what people can benefit from All right so so if you've noticed our topic has to do something with cardio conditioning um metabolic training and so i just happened to see on t nation an article uh they posted the the article reads tip do metabolic resistance training not cardio this type of training raises the metabolism, preserves muscle, and torches fat, and here's how to do it. And so I sent it over to Jerry, Coach Jerry, like he said, and um, so we've kind of had a little bit of a debate about it, and so we're here to talk to you guys about it today. Cool. So, all right. So, in a nutshell, um, so what we're going to do today, it's kind of uh, something that I don't think a lot of podcasts or, like, these types of shows do, is one thing that we discussed before starting the show is... Kind of the more that we that we that we learn, especially I know for me, once I got my master's degree, I I actually before when I got my bachelor's degree, I thought I just had it like down. I thought oh, yeah. I had the information down. I knew exactly how to write a program, how to work anyone out. And then I soon realized as I get into grad school, like I just don't know that much. So I used, I had the mentality of all right, it's either black and white. It is you know high intensity cardio better than long intensity or low intensity cardio. It's either or, it's not both. Mm -hmm. But I think as you know, you get more educated, you're around really smart people, um, you start realizing it's always contextual. So it's always, it depends on what situation, um, a schedule, injury, whatever that may be. So I think something we can do that's that's kind of cool is uh, is do somewhat like a, like a debate where, you know, we, we pick a topic and today is gonna be about high intensity versus kind of low intensity. Um, and you take a side, whether you agree or you don't, I think it's important to like, especially for me is to pick a side that I don't agree with, <laughs> look into it. Cause I know it opens up my, my perspective and I, I find out either I was kind of right, but I still have, you know, mixed feelings about it, or, you know, maybe it confirms that what I believed in was, was correct. And then we kind of discuss and bounce some topics and essentially we kind of let the, the people that are watching this kind of form their own opinions on it. And then, but it's, at the end of the day, it's just trying to get people to see both sides of the argument. Um, and most of the time it's, I think it's more of a gray than black and white. I mean, would you agree with that? Oh yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with the, it's a very gray shaded area. And one of the things I tell my, you know, strength and conditioning class, eventually they're going to be their own coaches. And so yep. you've got to learn the principles of strength and conditioning, right? That's why the class is called principles of strength and conditioning. But as you venture out and as you meet new coaches, everyone has their own coaching style. And so you've got to be able to defend why you're choosing that particular coaching style, yeah. why you're choosing that particular method. And if you have sound reason and you can defend it, then no one's going to question you. Um, but you're only going to get better if you keep pushing your own boundaries, right? Surrounding yourself. Don't be the smartest person in the room all the time. It's super important. Yeah. yeah. Learn from other people. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the times when I go to these conferences, trust me, I'm not the smartest person in the room. So I go find the smartest person in the room and make friends with them and learn yep. from them. Yep. Right. And it only builds my, my. Your tools, right? You're, yeah. you're sharpening your tools. You're getting more tools to use. Uh, but when you're just kind of super narrow minded, it's tough to, to see the horizon because you're just like you're so stuck in your beliefs that it, pro it prohibits you from growth, literal mm -hmm. growth. Right. Yeah. And I and I, like you said, as an undergrad, I thought I, I knew it all. I thought 
hey, why, like, why can't I do all this stuff? But yeah. then I got into grad school and I left grad school and I'm like, I know nothing. Yeah. What the heck? <laughs> I still know nothing. I'm still trying yeah. to learn. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so if anyone's out there, you guys are just getting into the field, just be open-minded and, and try to try to try not to be so narrow-minded and just be open. I mean, it doesn't mean you have to completely change your philosophy, but at least be open to, to new methods. Okay. And, and, oh, yeah. and sorry, last oh. thing. I mean, there are, there are some strength coaches and, and researchers that have been out there longer than we have, and, and they have even admitted that from what they learned in the beginning is has changed over time because no. science is changing, because our learning is changing, and that's okay, right? And then I think the biggest thing is just the, the amount of information that we have access to, right? If, you know, 20 years ago, if you're a college student, you're probably going to the library mm -hmm. and learning from your professor. Now it's like, we can go on Instagram live and literally communicate with another professor in Europe or in Spain or, or in South America. It doesn't matter, but it's like we just have access to so much information and, and people as well that it's just so much easier to, to, to learn and, and, and get more information. Yeah. Right? Or, or clinics and things like that. Exactly. Okay. So then let's talk about this article. So this article we got off of T Nation. It's titled Do or it's basically given a tip. So it's by Alan Cosgrove. So if you guys don't know who he is. This is kind of like one of uh, one of the legends in the in the fitness industry. Mm -hmm. um, he's located up north. I think it's Results Fitness is, is what his his name of his gym is. Him and his wife, they're both right. in the in the realm. Super smart, super given. He has actually I don't know if you know his background story, but he has a pretty powerful story as far as uh, why he got into the to the fitness industry. Uh, but I just know like every time I've seen him at clinics, great presenter, super humble and willing to, to, to give some information. So he's the author of this. You can find it and just type in do metabolic resistance training, not cardio. This type of training raises the metabolism, preserves muscle and torches fat. Here's how to do it. So kind of a little context is he works with, uh, I know he works with some athletes, but it's his gym is primarily more kind of general pop from kind of my understanding. Uh, but essentially it's an article trying to, to give the reader a perspective that, you know, maybe long, long, lower intensity cardio is not ideal. Um, again, this is specifically for, for kind of body composition. It's not, he's not talking about performance, mm -hmm. power, you know, rotational stuff. It's just more body composition, body fat loss, trying to hold on to the muscle, um, and, and increasing your metabolism. Um, so let's start off with kind of, again, this, we're going to kind of take it a little, a little different angle where she's going to kind of argue one side of the coin and she's going to take the, the higher intensity side. And then, you know, I'm going to see what she's got. And we didn't really practice before this. We literally, I think the coolest part is she sent me this article like on Tuesday or Wednesday and we read it and then we just showed up, kind of did a brief discussion and then we're just going to kind of, kind of see where we go with it. Okay. So make your argument as far as why the folks out there, um, again, body composition, why they should be doing some higher intensity uh, training. All right. So as far as body composition is concerned, right, we, we kind of see it as, hey, let's be in the fat burning zone. So let's dig on to some sort of aerobic machine for what, 40, 45 minutes, an hour, yep. right? It's supposed to help us uh, lose, burn some fat. So the argument is doing some high intensity type stuff is going to help. Um, and that can be uh, sprints, sprints on a, on the treadmill, uh, yeah. Tabata style. And so where I think it's very helpful is helps one preserve the muscle mass, right? Especially if you are trying to build up muscle and you're trying to lean out, we want to preserve the muscle mass as, as best as possible. So let me ask you, so I have a little, little five pound muscle here, All right, This is I don't know if it's, uh, I definitely don't think it's scaled, but uh, why is preserving muscle even important to people? We need muscle to do everything, right? Mm -hmm. We need to be strong. I mean, we don't need to be the next Olympian, okay. but <laughs> young or old, uh, we all need muscle. We need to preserve that muscle mass. We don't want to be uh, what we term skinny fat, yeah. right? We want to preserve all oh, this <laughs> nice piece of muscle belly. So I think it's, and just to kind of make it important, it's just like the muscle, most people think this is just like, it just looks good on your okay. body, right? This thing is metabolically active and that's just a fancy word that it needs, it, it basically needs fuel to survive. So as you get older, I know there's little research that shows basically your strength and your, your muscle mass, especially as you get older, especially if you're a female, like your 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 functionality right when you're retiring are you able to take a trip depends a lot on do you have actual 
like and it's i term it quality muscle it's like can this can your muscle on your legs actually take you up i just recently went to rome it's like every day i was walking twenty six thousand miles if i'm not functional like i can't take that trip i'm on a wheelchair or i'm just not taking the trip in general but like i think it's important to not just think it's just for aesthetics but there's a high high amount of just quality of life that goes along with preserving that so if anyone's just hearing us talk about you know getting on stage and looking good like that's important but it's like there's an actual quality of life standpoint that you need that muscle mass right i mean so that's that's i think that's super important to know that's not just for from an aesthetic standpoint right right definitely okay. so you know doing this high intensity training how many of us out there you know are very busy i can tell you i'm trying to plan like 10 different things at a time making time for the gym uh this semester has been one of the most difficult things um and so i think that doing high intensity type of work versus long cardio on a treadmill is going to be more time effective more efficient um i i do this a lot with my cheer and dancing like i said if you remember or those of you who followed us last uh week i only get 45 minutes with them and so sometimes i have to choose the best um choice of exercise that's going to give me the best bang for the buck and especially with cheer and dance right one of the biggest things is body composition they've got to look good they're performing out there in front of the school going to nationals in January. So they've got to look good. And so I'm getting more, uh, I'm, it's just more effective for me if time efficiency wise to do high intensity type of work. Okay. So as you guys are coming into our live feed, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them away. We're talking about does high intensity exercise or intervals. Is it more? Is it better for body composition, fat loss, muscle per, uh, preserving the muscle than lower intensity? So Whitney just made the argument as to why she feels higher intensity work uh, might be a, a better option for people. Right? She works specifically with dancers, and um, she talked about time management. That you know, if, and again, I work with people as well on a daily basis, and one of their biggest excuses, which is a valid excuse. It's not like they're making an excuse, but they have kids, they have family, they have, they have things to do that they just don't have time. And that could discourage a lot of people. If I, if I tell someone, Hey, you are required to work out an hour a day and they literally can't figure out how to find an hour. Like they're probably just not going to work out in general. So yeah. I, I just discourage them from, from even trying something. Um, so, all right. So I, I think that's, that's a valid argument. Okay, so any any other any other arguments you got? No, I'm I'm ready to hear good? your your right. argument. Let's go. Okay, so I'm going to take the side as far as lower intensity and why I think uh, that might be a better option as far as um, you know. Again, this is it's hard to make the argument just from body composition, but I'm gonna try it. <laughs> um, so I think for me, the first kind of thing I would discuss has to do with just the amount of stress that higher intensity is going to place on a person, whether that's an athlete or just a person that's trying to get in shape. Um, I think in my experience that people that only do high intensity interval training, they don't, they don't see the long-term, uh, kind of the cascade that's happening inside of their body. Um, they might be feeling good. They might be having lots of energy, but they're not seeing inside of the, the muscle, the ligaments, the joints, that what's going on over the long, long term, right? So they, you know, there's people that just say like, I don't like running. I don't want to do anything. I just want to go hard for 20 minutes. Um, and you know, they see the benefit, they get some good results, but they're not seeing the long-term benefit or long-term, um, kind of detriment that that's, that's taking place that at some point they're going to burn out, mm -hmm. right? That, that stress becomes super high. Um, injuries, I know that's the, to me, it's like whenever I have an injury, that's, that's my body telling you, telling me you, there's something going on here where you might need to pull back. You might need to change something up. And that's kind of my signal of, I, I need to maybe bring down my intensity. So, I mean, my argument has to do with just too much, even if it's a good thing is it, going to wear and tear your body. Um, if you're a professional athlete, you're, you're probably already doing a lot of high intensity work, you know, uh, game day practice that my argument would be like when you're not doing that stuff, uh, you know, 30 to 45 minutes of lower intensity work is going to not only help with, you know, burning some calories and things like that, but it's also going to help with re re regenerating and let your, let your body recover from those high intensity bouts. Um, so that would be kind of my argument. I mean, yeah, you, it, it would, I would have to be, you know, maybe like 30 minutes, but I could still make the argument of jumping rope for 10, 15 minutes. You can get a nice little uh, workout that's lower intensity. You're still going to get a nice little sweat. Uh, but let's talk about, so that would be my argument. It's just too much high intensity is going to just 
jack up your body at some point, then you're going to get injured. And then at some point, you're, you're not going to see the benefits of the exercise itself. Right. Right. So basically, too much of one thing can be a bad thing. Right? Too much, too much, of, much of a thing. good yep. thing can be a bad thing. Yep. yep. Right. So let's talk about, I guess, one of uh, one of the things that they talk about. Um, it's where's the did they cite the, the Tabata. Mm, yeah, I think it's on the final page. Right. Mm, there's. Not that they did. I know they have the EPUB researchers. Well, one of the things that kind of uh, where where people, I, I, if everyone's familiar with Tabata, so I mean, what, what in generally, what, what's Tabata? What so, is that? so Tabata is looking at uh, doing some sort of circuit. So two things, uh, 20 seconds on, 20 seconds work with 10 seconds rest, maybe a little less, and then you go back and do the same uh, type of work. So Tabata is actually something I did in the beginning, like maybe the first month working with my cheer and dance team. Okay. So like, how, how'd you do it? Like what exercises or what was the protocol? Um, so a lot of it was either body weight type stuff, or if they could, we uh, brought in a dumbbell or a kettlebell that, you know, was best for them. But the problem is there's not that many that can go around for all of them. So a lot of times it worked doing a lot more body work, body weight type of work. Um, but it benefited them. They, they, it was more, like I said, that more general preparation, learning the movement. So I was getting them to learn the movement as well and, and mm -hmm. work on their body composition. Um, so one of like, one I could think of up off the top of my head is, so I have the partner doing, holding a plank okay. and then the other person is doing uh, high knees between their legs. Okay. And then they, at 10 seconds, they would switch and they do that for about eight to 10 rounds of it. So doing like a core exercise and then some lower body high intensity yes. and just kind of go back and forth. Okay. Go back and forth. And then nice. they would get a rest, minute, two minutes, and then they'd come back and we would do another whole set. So we would do squat jumps with uh, mountain climbers. Okay. So again, a core with lower body. So it always, it, it just depended. Um, I changed it up every single time they came in so that they didn't get bored or they didn't get, oh, we have to do this again. They actually look forward to it every nice. single time. So. so how long does that entire workout last? Something like that maybe seven minutes at most so very very short but mm -hmm. just i mean i'm sure they're they're getting their butts kicked oh yeah they're yeah. getting and we do like i said in in that span of 45 minutes with warm up and cool down so cool down would be you know cooling down and going to go foam roll and get their mm -hmm. heart rates back down to resting um three three of those within okay. 45 minutes so like three, okay. yeah three of them so and the and i think every every week i would either go instead of 10 now we went 12 or instead of the 20 seconds, I went 30 seconds and I backed off on the rest. So it was always changing something within the, the nice. Tabata style. So like the variables, rest parent, all that stuff. Right. Cool. Um, okay, so then again, that's something that I think I, I did, I've done it in the past. I still do some to a certain extent. I mean, it's like there's no set of like, all right, it has to be lower body, but it can be anything. It could be jump rope for 20 seconds, you know, hold a plank for 10 seconds. It could be whatever exercise you want. It doesn't really matter, but it's just like, you know, now you're, at some point there's high fatigue right because you're only you're doing like a two to one work to rest so at some point like you're you're, you're getting hit hard so if you're doing burpees that's a tough mm -hmm. that's a tough tabata because at some point your shoulders get fatigued mm -hmm. so i think it's like just be smart with you know how you program stuff it doesn't mean you can't do it, it just means you know don't do 45 minutes of it um but you can do it with sprints so it's really efficient and, it, and, it, and i've done it with a heart rate monitor and it jacks my heart rate up <laughs> i'm in the 90 plus range right. Um, so, but again, that's, so there's a study that they basically compared kind of to body to lower intensity. They got better results, but then after about, I think three weeks or so, basically the, the results plateaued and the lower intensity group ended up actually getting better results. So it's like, uh, it's not to say that Tabata is ineffective or effective. I mean, it's going to work. It's just a matter of making sure you're, you're programming, you know, it for X amount of time and then you're moving away from it. And you're also working that aerobic, uh, aerobic system because that's going to work your, 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 your capacity component. It's not just going to, um, you know, uh, trash you like a Tabata workout. You did it every single day. Right. Right. Um, so let's talk about, maybe more a little bit the physiology of kind of what you discuss about like the gas syndrome right. and things like that so why why not why not just do tabata for you know you know 45 minutes a day for four or five days a week right so uh, with your argument and my argument right we came to this conclusion that incorporating the, the slow long duration type of stuff is going to be helpful in a sense that so he he mentioned something about gas which is general adaptation syndrome by hans sellier um it's this syndrome or general adaptation syndrome is more commonly associated within psychology 
Um, but it does get used within the fitness and exercise industry. And so basically you are at homeostasis, right? Your body always wants to be at homeostasis. That's the main What's homeostasis? Being at normal level, like there's, you're, you're not sick. You're not, it's happy where it's at, right? You have this happy medium. Um, a stressor comes in. So a stressor can be anything from, uh, do a workout. Yeah. A workout, workout. It's a good stress, right? We need stress. So to an extent for fitness and exercise, you need stress. We like stress. Um, so what happens is you have the stressor come in, so you have this alarm phase. So you kind of dip low below your homeostasis, your normal levels. Um, and with rest, with proper amount of rest, you come back up to your normal level or even higher. So meaning you super compensate. You're ready and prepared for the next stressor that's going to come, the next exercise bout that you're about to have. Mm -hmm. um, and so incorporating the low intensity type stuff with the high intensity type stuff is going to help with that, that general adaptation. So you'll go down into the hole, right? You'll do some of the, the low aerobic type stuff. You come back stronger and better ready for the next one, right? So if you were to do high intensity, like, like he was saying is if we do high intensity, we're just going to keep digging ourselves into a hole deeper and deeper yep. and deeper until we overtrain until we burn out. And so there's a huge benefit to bringing in this long duration aerobic work. Yep. And that's how I picture it. I just like you're digging, a, you're digging your ditch, and it's okay to dig a little ditch because you you can get out of it, right? But at some point, if you dig too deep, and you get into overtraining, and it's like that's a place you don't want to be, right? Because now you, your immune system is jacked up. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get sick. You're gonna get injured, and it's tough to. I mean, it takes a lot to get to that point. I don't. I think a lot of people like. They say they're overtrained when they might not be. They're just maybe, you know, a little bit burned out. But yeah. overtraining means you your body is like you're not doing mm -hmm. anything. And, 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 and now it takes you six months, a year. to. And this is why we do like periodization is, is slowly kind of moving away from certain points in, in the training season. Of, of So you're not getting into that point. Um, so she's talking about like, you know, that, that syndrome of what we want, we want to dig a little bit and then we want to get out of that bounce back and then get a little bit more. And now we're starting from like a new set point, new homeostasis, you're a little bit stronger, a little faster. And then you just keep basically cycling through that. But just like when she talks about psychology, it could be, you know, mental stress mm -hmm. where you have a death in the family and you're not able to cope with that. Now it affects your work, your, your relationships, all that. So it's the same concept as you're just digging yourself a deeper ditch. Um, and it's, sometimes it's hard to get out of it. Right. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, again, both sides of the argument is just, you know, high intensity exercise. Um, I mean, sum, sum up your, your, your points. Right. So, like I said, with high intensity exercise, you're going to get better bang for your buck. Right. It's going to help with body composition. It's going to help with the preserving the muscle mass. Um, so there's, it's good. It's good, especially when you need time effective workouts. You want that bang for the buck. Get in, get out, go do the next thing, right? Yep. And I think that's that's super important. Is if you're if you're mixed, if you're if you're not you don't have that much time, then doing some high intensity is gonna it's, it's gonna be good for you. But now my argument is, just don't do nothing but that and mix up some aerobic work where you're going out for a jog, you're, you're, you're doing some stairs, but you're not going as fast as you can going up every single rep. You're not going to failure on your weight training session. Some days it's like you're using, you know, something maybe 50, 60%, just kind of get your workout in, but don't crush yourself. You're waking up sore every single time. You're probably getting into the, you're digging that ditch, that ditch. You don't, I mean, it's okay to like get sore, but you shouldn't get sore every single time. That's telling you red flag, you're not recovering and it could be something with your nutrition and your sleep or just you're doing too much. I know as I've gotten older, it's just <laughs> the same workouts, I'm cutting them in half and you know, I'm lucky I'm still able to at least keep my body composition. But I, if I do the same stuff that I was doing five years ago, like I can't walk the next day yeah. or the next day and then even the next day after that. Um, so my argument is just, you know, some days pull it back and and know that it, this is a it's a long term investment. It's mm -hmm. like saving money. Like you, you can't just put a thousand dollars and then it's gonna grow into you're ready to retire. It's a little bit. So again, mix it up. Do a little bit. Uh, if your goal is body composition, um, you know you have to push. You, you can't. It can't always be easy work. You gotta you gotta push yourself a little bit. You have to get a little soreness, but just make sure you're you're knowing that it's a long term game and it only takes one you know pulled hamstring when you're trying to go hard and then you're fatigued and then you're gone for six months eight months and, and now you can exercise right All right right and it's it it's basically you can use it as a deload right so in, in our program designing we have at least 
every once in a while a deload week where you you back off the intensity you know you go do go do something else if you feel like it or go for a walk go for a walk there's nothing wrong with adding in a walk and um you know to help with the recovery maybe you're extra extra sore that week go for the walk that can help it help out tremendously and so that's kind of where this whole gray area that we talk about with kinesiology is that there's no only do hit and that's the best answer possible no you need to incorporate both hit and long duration or, or just long cardio kind of stuff yeah and again i think it's like don't be so dogmatic where you're just you're you're, you're just doing one thing and that's all you believe in especially in this field it's like you know back a few years ago i used to do tabata because that's <laughs> that's what people said do it do it and then you start learning on wait why why is everyone moving away from aerobic and doing nothing but high intensity and then you see injuries you see and then we, we move back so it's like it's constantly evolving but it's like at the end of the day it's always they always go in circles it goes from high intensity <laughs> to low to high to weights to, to to conditioning to everything so it's like just don't be so so dogmatic with your your philosophy and your thinking and and just try something and, and you're gonna see that long term wise you're gonna you're gonna get the best bang for your buck you're not gonna you're not gonna walk out of the gym every single time super beat up um, and you're gonna be able to play with your kids or go you know play big game the next day so it, it's just a matter of taking your ego out of it mm-hmm. and, and 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 sticking to the to long term program that's what you know that's why we always talk about when it comes to program it's like you know we always we're programming from 3 months what we do today is going to have an effect in 3 months not tomorrow not today not the next hour but it's like we're doing a workout today like how you said we're going to deload this week so in you know 6 weeks we're reaching our peak when you have to show up on fight night, on you know dance night, whatever it is, you're peaking. But it's because we did that, that deload in a certain area of uh, of the program where we just we pushed you really hard, and then we brought you back a little bit, and then we went slightly above what your your normal was, and then we just kept doing that, and that's how you're going to get uh, long term success. Right, right, right. And you know we we go back and forth between our different populations, and so especially when it comes to general population or. Um, Doing the low, like he said, you know, as you get a little bit older, it gets hard to maintain those, you know, those heavy, hard, intensity type of workouts. Um, I'm getting to a point where this summer I did spend some time in the gym. Just I went on the elliptical machine and 30 minutes was a stretch, but I, I did 30 minutes. It felt good. I didn't need to overkill myself with some sprints on the treadmill. I mean, I used to do that when I had to get ready for Miss Fullerton and my pageant lifestyle, but now... I can't do it every day. I need some sort. I need recovery. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it's. And, but the thing is, same thing. It's like now, don't go too far on that end where yeah. everything's easy. It's like that's not what we're saying either. It's some days you do gotta you gotta push it, you gotta crush it. Uh, but it's a long term game. So again, hopefully uh, everyone that watched this is kind of understanding on a topic like this. It's it's not so black and white. It's a, a, lot, a lot of it's in the middle. It just kind of depends on your schedule. It depends on your, you know, your sport. It depends on your age. It depends on, on so many factors. And that's why having a coach or a trainer who's experienced, that's where we have this, you know, this, uh, this, all this data that we have from all of our sample size as far as our clients. Now we're like, hey, you're kind of like my one of my other clients mm-hmm. who, you know, same age, same gender, same sport, whatever it is. Maybe we should do a little bit more aerobic work because you're, you're, you're whatever, whatever. So it's just like that's where, you know, working with the coach, knowledge where coach can make that program and think the long term. Think six months from today versus what, what you're going to get out of today's workout, right? And sometimes psychologically it, it's, it, it sucks because some days you do want to push, but it's like, hey, the program says today we're going to pull back. And psychologically, you got to be okay with that, right? There, there's times where athletes come in and, you know, I know that I could push them really hard, but I know they have, you know, a tough uh, practice tomorrow where I'm just like, all I'm going to do is even though they have the energy today, I'm going to hurt what they're going to be doing tomorrow. So it's like I have to leave my ego out of it, even though I want to give them, you know, I want to go after it, get after it. I think it's best for them to just let's take it easy and you know, do your thing tomorrow during the big game or fight or, or performance, whatever it is. All right. Right, so definitely. get yourself a coach who has mm-hmm. uh, who has knowledge uh, because they can help you uh, basically take the guesswork out of it. I yeah. think sometimes as athletes, you guys always and, and girls always want to push hard because it's like mentally, it's like oh, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to be weak. But it's like having a coach is going to allow you to take that take that guesswork out of mm-hmm. it and let us make those decisions mm-hmm. and take more of an objective point of view uh, based off of your long term uh, your long term program.
All right, thanks. Do we have any questions? Someone just asked, I think. Oh, mm. so to, to, to be in your Actually, life. just want, let, let's make some shout outs because we didn't get a chance yeah, to. Uh, let's see. M. Jack, thanks for coming in. Flying Hawaiian, Randy. Uh, Coach Matthew out in East Coast. What? Was yeah. he was he was he on the last one too? Or was that no, other coach? no, no, no. Yeah, it was a different coach. Um, so I got lifting dot science dot for all. I like that. Yeah, name. appreciate it. Uh, got Rob out in um, the East Coast as well, but he's more with sports psych. He works with uh, his main sport. He likes working with his boxers. No way. Yeah, Rob. 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 Heck yeah, man. I yeah. train the boxers. Definitely reach out to you. Yeah. We got Valeria dot N M Senya. Yeah. Vero, she's back. Gerson. One got? of my students, Brandon. Thanks for, for thanks for joining in. What's up, Brandon? Doctor yeah. Doctor Mike. Oh yeah, <laughs> Doctor Mike. Always stop. He, it he always gets mad at me because he's like, you know, uh, Jonathan's my first name. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's not. You're not Mike. It's, it's hard. Jonathan. You have two first two know, first man. names. He always gets mad. <laughs> uh, we got Ken. Uh, you got uh, Joaquin Hans and Nick. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. What's up, Scooter from from New York? He's working. With, he works with boxers. Walt. They got a podcast. Carlos, Lizette. Who else you got? Mandacia. Albert. So we have a question. It's gonna take a while to type. All right, Walt. Shoot it at us. We have we got plenty of time. So if you have a question, shoot it at us. Anyone that's uh, watching us live, ask some questions. It doesn't have to be conditioning related. If we know the name and we know the answer, then we'll answer. If not, we so won't. Rob's saying so boxing legend. MMA session. Let me see. Nick, appreciate nice. that <laughs> legend label. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. She is a legend. <laughs> All right. Boxing MMA con uh, session coming soon. Where, where are you located? Where is he? Where? He's doing his PhD right now. Oh, for nice. Yeah. So yeah, man. But no. is he out here? Or is no, he? Oh, no, okay. no. Yeah, if you're ever down here, man, uh, my, my place is over here in the city of Whittier, and you're more than welcome to come he's on out, in. He's out. I think he's not that putting him out. Lake, Lakewood? Lakewood? Okay. Lakewood's not far. Oh, it's not far at all. Yeah. So maybe okay. when you come visit yeah. for the holidays. Okay, so we have a question. We have a man He uh, asking, so my job is very physically demanding, mainly lower body. I climb towers and poles daily, and I get off work, and I'm extremely tired. But I still hit the gym, but I never do legs I'm just drains thoughts. So let's kind of like deconstruct yeah. the question, right? So he's on his feet pretty much all day. He's climbing, so he's he's already basically doing resistance training. Mm -hmm. So be it maybe body weight, but he's probably have has something like a belt or something on him. Um, so he he hits the gym, but he doesn't do legs because he's tired. So what are some options that he could do as far as being able to to you know? I'm sure he wants to get stronger and. And be able to make those climbs a little easier, but should he, should he do legs? Should he skip legs? Should he? What, what are your thoughts on that? Never skip legs. Never skip. I mean, legs. that's why my name is Big Ass <laughs> Muscle. So <laughs> never skip legs. But so, I skip upper body. So. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So again, my my uh, my easy answer was is going to be. Oh, my phone, my thing just came off. So my easy answer is going to be. Um, I think you still have to train your legs. Um, it's just a matter of on the days that, that maybe you're doing more climbing than not, then those are maybe your upper body slash smaller muscle group days. And maybe on the weekend when, when you're, when you're not climbing and, uh, for work, maybe those are your, your, your strength training sessions. And, and to me, it's like, if your legs are really tired, you want to make sure maybe you're not doing either such a high volume mm -hmm. of training. Um, where it's just going to trash you even more and, and tear up your muscle fires. But you can still do a little bit of like maybe some plyometrics, low volume where you're doing a little bit of jumping, um, even some speed work where, where you're keeping the reps anywhere from, you know, three to five reps where it's not, even though your legs are a little heavy, they're, they're probably going to feel good afterwards. But to me, it's just you want to you wanna stay away from more like kind of bodybuilding stuff on the days that you're just – you're coming home and your legs are super heavy. That would be kind of my, my, my recommendation. If you were my client, I would just have you come in. We'll maybe do some, you know, three to five uh, reps and maybe do yeah. not a lot of like eccentric stuff. So like to me, I would do maybe some, I don't know, some box squats, some uh, trap bar deadlifts. And then when you come up, you maybe drop the weight, you're not lowering the weight. And then I would definitely do like prowler work where it's all concentric and Basically, what we're trying to talk about is the, the part that basically tears up your muscle fibers and gets you super sore. There are certain exercises that we can eliminate that part from the exercise 
like a like a prowler where you push the weight like on turf and things like that um but instead of doing like lunges which for me every single time i do lunges i kid you not i always get sore but when i do something like a box squat i never get sore so right. it's like that would be my recommendation is, is if you ever want to come in, I can show you some of these exercises where we take away the component that's really going to trash you, um, but you still kind of build your strength. Even though you're doing a lot of like climbing and walking, there's not a ton of overload. There's more volume because you're doing so much of it, but I still think there there's some benefit to doing some, some explosive type training, some real strength training, just not super high volume. Um, what would be your, any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I definitely agree on the high volume, especially when you're tired. Um, I could see a benefit to the high volume if you keep your intensity low. If you want to, you know, move your legs, go on the, the leg press, mm. do some high volume, but keep the, the, the intensity low. So don't go too heavy on the weights, right? Don't have both intensity and volume super high. Exactly. So you're like... You're going to failure every time. Yeah, if you're going to failure, you're hitting 20, and that's failure at, like, 200 pounds. Yeah. Like, and maybe 200 pounds is, like, extra heavy for you. Like, no, take it down. Just get the legs moving through that full range of motion. About, do 50% of what you think you can do and, and do that kind of movement. Um, another thing that I saw your follow-up question was kind of about not getting burnt out. If you want, I would incorporate just because you are doing upper body and you are incorporating lower body, do whole body type workouts or supersets. You know, in, so it's, it's taking two different exercises, and I had just talked about this on my um, Instagram, but it's taking two, two different exercises or two different muscle groups and doing them back to back mm. for three, three by 10. So 10, uh, would you say goblet squats or box squats mm -hmm. paired up with whatever your favorite upper body exercise is and do bench press. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the bench press. <laughs> ben, the bench press. Right, so you're getting both muscle groups and you're, you're getting the lower body, you're still getting the upper body and you're getting a full body Calories workout. So it. at the same time, if you do a full body workout, then you don't, maybe you don't have to go to the gym as often. Right, because you're doing the whole body, you still need some rest in between the days. So then you do whole body workout three times a week. You know, no one says we have to be at the gym six six times a week. I used to have time for that. Yeah. I'm lucky if I can get two times out of the week now. Yeah. I'm lucky. And, and another thing is like one thing I would not do is is kind of even though you're working out your legs, like you still got to train your legs. And kind of mm -hmm. how she took, piggyback on her, it's like, it's just modifying certain things. Mm -hmm. Cause I think it's like, if you don't actually strength train, and a lot of times people get confused with like bodybuilding training versus actual strength training. Strength training is, there are going to be days, maybe on a Saturday or Sunday where you're not working, there's some heavier weights because the stronger your legs get, the less mm -hmm. those work days are going to beat your legs up. But if you just focus on mainly doing upper body, you're basically never, I mean, you're doing higher volume stuff, just doing, you know, your typical work stuff, but you're not actually getting them stronger. You're building a little bit of muscle, but you're not strength training. I think to me, it's like you can do some plow metrics, a little bit of Olympic lifts if you want, but just some really jump in, some explosive medicine ball type stuff that's going to build up your strength, your power, but not going to gonna jack you up as far as uh, making you super duper sore. Um, so I think the, 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 the answer to the question has to do with more so um, modify some things, but do not just think um, that, that, that that's going to be just enough, mm -hmm. right? I think mm -hmm. there, there's more to it than that. Um, so hopefully we answered that question. Um, but yeah, just again, if you're, if, you're, if you're very sedentary, then you probably should be working out more. But let's just say you're, you're always on your feet and you're doing those climbs, you know, four or five days out of the week. Maybe, you know, you're doing more upper body, maybe three days or more upper body focus two days more lower body or how, kind of how, how Whitney said, if you're working out four days a week, more emphasis on upper body because you are getting some volume mm -hmm. day to day work. If you're a mailman, like you're walking so much already, but you still got to do a little bit of strength training, but you just probably don't have to do as much. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Great it, question. And thank you for that. Yeah. And we're always open for more of that discussion. If you uh, want to reach out to either one of us. Um, so we yeah, got another one. question. Yeah. From Brandon, one of my past students as well. Oops, sorry. So what games, or tips do you guys have or uh, do you guys recommend for youth athletes? I have a couple 10 year olds. We work on the foundations, but I also like to incorporate games to keep it fun for them. Thanks guys. All right. So one of the things that I actually, I actually do have a game and, and one of the ones that I incorporated when I was working for athletic Republic, I was working at the high school level. Um, it was after girls volleyball, their season just finished. And so kind of a deload or just like active rest that we did was red light, green light, a simple game. Which was that one? Red light, I've heard of it, but or, well, to... so like you just have like I was at the end, and I, you know you start them some back farther back, and you tell okay. them red light, so they can't move during red light. Got it. Green light, they can sprint to you as fast as they can, and then if you say yellow light, they've got to walk. 
So you're getting a little it's bit like of interval training, I'm guessing, or sprint. No, or really, no. So actually, the main for me, the main yeah. focus of that game, the red light, green light, was to work on stopping. Uh, the deceleration. Deceleration, and then as well as stopping in that good athletic position. Mm. And and they're volleyball players, right? So Perfect. they have to be in that that low athletic position, and so. They oh, didn't okay. know, right? I didn't tell them, like, hey, we're going to play red light, green light so that we can work on deceleration <laughs> and your stopping mechanics. I just told them, hey, let's play red light, green light. And they, like, they had so much fun. Like, they didn't even think anything of it. And so um, that's one of my tips for playing games with um, with uh, youth. What about you? So red light, green light, I think uh, one of... Uh, one of uh... <laughs> like, like it's, it sounds stupid, but, like, tag. Tag is... Is, is working on yeah. anytime again like how you said if you tell the kids we're going to work on some type of fancy acceleration like they zone out but if you anything with competition uh we do a game where like all right so two kids line up we do it in the gym so it's not super far but you can do it uh you know 20 yards out so you have like tennis balls you have a bucket you place the bucket 20 yards out and you can either do it like a relay where they have a team so one can sprint puts the ball in the ten tennis bucket runs back has to tag come back so you're basically working on some high intensity sprints uh, but then there's another one that we do in here as well we call it a speed tic-tac-toe so we put uh, four PVC pipes and make it into like a like a tic-tac-toe thing and then we just use some mini bands so each person has their own uh, set of colors as soon as I say go they run they put it in whatever box they want they run back grab another one so now they have to work on sprinting d cell they have to know a little bit of cognitive of right. where's my where's my three <laughs> squares they pop it and the first one that gets you know all three squares touching wins the game right, right? so I think it's it's you can, there's no like there's, there's almost like no limits make it fun make it com make yeah. it competitive uh, but yeah, those are the ones that, that I typically do. Anything with with tag related, some type of reaction, a stimulus, um, and they they eat it up. They oh yeah, it. and and again, they don't like just tell them they're playing a game. They yeah. don't know. They don't know what the benefits are. Yeah. But as long as you as a coach, like I said, if you as a coach, you can defend why you're doing it, giving the purpose, the why. No one's gonna question you. Hundred percent. Right? Like you even, I'm sure when you first heard me say red light, green light, like what? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm like actually, I want to go play. <laughs> Yeah, cool. so hopefully, right. hopefully that helped. All right, so this one Another from one? Nick, another student. Uh, what, and doing athletic training now, right? So what do you think about the kind of athletes CrossFit produces, and what is the closest comparison athlete you've seen that doesn't do CrossFit workouts? Mm, I think it's it's tough because it's like, to label CrossFit a, like actual workout, I mean, to me, it's like it's circuit training. Mm -hmm. It's I mean, I think that has always been around. But they, the reason I loved what they did was they added like, uh, you know, a competition aspect to it. Right. Know, it could be reps, it could be time, and things like that. So it's I don't know. It's hard for me to to. But to me, it's easily like something maybe like MMA fighters, even boxers, where these athletes, and that's what makes I think CrossFit athletes super special is they need every biomotor ability possible they need to be strong mm -hmm. explosive endurance, endurance conditioning flexibility yeah, so it's like every biomotor ability they have to be good at they can't just be you know if i'm a uh, i don't know a baseball player i don't really need endurance i mean i just need mm -hmm. to be able to sprint swing hard be explosive and if i'm a you know uh, i don't know other types of athletes where like if i'm a 100 meter sprinter i don't again i don't really need endurance i need yeah. to be able to sprint for 10 seconds or right. whatever it takes um so i think to me it like like an mma fighter where uh, and a boxer where they need kind of all biomotor abilities they need more conditioning a lot of endurance a lot of power strength all that stuff so to me that would be the closest kind of uh quote unquote athlete that, that resembles a crossfit athlete but i think like, again, what people don't realize, and again, I, I'm not anti-CrossFit at all, but I, I used to teach the Olympic lifting for, for years at one. I think it's more understanding that when people see them on TV, like, the, they're professional athletes. Like, they, they are the LeBron James of CrossFit. So when they're, you know, doing certain lifts, when they're super fatigued, like, that's what they do. But they don't always train like that. They're training with high quality and things like that. So it's more making sure you realize like that's what they do for a living and that's what they live and breathe they have coaches all that stuff it's you know if you know if i, I can't be lebron james i gotta learn certain aspects before i can start moving forward so that would be my 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 only thing with that is just realizing that they are professional athletes and to me that those guys and girls are just they're beasts like they just they, okay. they really are yeah, yeah. 
No, and, and remember how I said, don't always be the smartest person in the room. So I'm going to let Coach Jerry just have the answer on that one. I didn't really, like, it was kind of crazy. Like, they really are. Like, they need all those different adaptations within their, their sport. So yep. I didn't really and then look the, at that big picture. when they show up, like, on, on competition, they do it over, like, three or four days. Like, right. they, they, they literally have to compete at high intensities and or high volume because sometimes they'll start off with, like, a freaking, you know, 10 mile run or I don't know what there, there was one thing where they had to swim and it's just like holy crap and then they got to recover mm-hmm. and then right back the next day and then they do it again and then you know championship and so on so it's like whether you hate or you love it, it's like you got to respect that, that they are professional athletes and they, they they train extremely hard but again they their competition their main one is once a year so they're also periodizing kind of we talked about I guarantee you there's times where they deload and they're doing really more aerobic type yeah. work, letting their body hiking. recover, hiking and Correct. stuff like that. And then there's weeks where they're pushing really, really hard. So, um, but yeah, that's a great question. So we have another one um, from Veronica. She says, can you all do a discussion for mommies pregnant and post? Please have lots of mommies. Wait, please have lots of mommies that want info. So it seems like she wants to maybe touch on some topics as far as women that are pregnant and i think that's a that's a great topic yeah. because it's like all right it's something that a lot of women are going to have to face right if mm-hmm. they get pregnant it's like what what are my options as far as staying fit staying healthy um and you know i've trained pregnant women in the past and and there's actually research behind there there's some uh, there's some from brad schoenfeld where he did an article i think it's on the nsca where he just gives some basic guidelines okay, first trimester, what are the do's right. and don'ts, second trimester, there third, are. and so on. So, like, some basic – and it's just, like, honestly, use common sense. Mm-hmm. It's, you know it, – it, but it also, I mean, I've seen some women that are pregnant, and they're still able to oh, yeah. work pretty hard. But yeah. it's because it's not – they didn't get pregnant and then start it. <laughs> They've been in shape and, and healthy and, and fit, and then they got pregnant. And usually doctors are like, hey, if you've been working out, then, you know, just use common sense. If something hurts, something does for all, then stop. But like, you can push pretty hard up until I don't know how many weeks it is. But it's just like um, there's certain things where, you know, certain trimester, you just shouldn't be on your back right. or shouldn't be doing, you know, certain abdominal type stuff. Mm-hmm. But do you have any? And, and we can definitely do uh, maybe next week we can, you know, devote uh, X amount of time to maybe this specific yeah. topic. We'll gra- grab some data. And uh, but I think that's that's really important. No, yeah, uh, uh, definitely. It's it's uh, funny. It's a conversation I have with my fiance all the time. Not all the time, mm-hmm. but that you know, especially the older generation, aka both of our parents. Um, yep. I don't think they fully like truly understand that when I become pregnant, that mm-hmm. I will be lifting weights, and you know, they joke about it, but. I don't think they know that I really am going to. I don't, I don't think she's going to change the little ass muscles. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I can't change that Instagram name. We've got to live up to it. Um, no, but definitely um, I have a, a whole lecture we're ready for it. So we can bring that in. And uh, like he said, with research, everything we're, we're about is backing it with research as well. Yeah. So great question. And, and definitely we we're promise to use maybe we'll do about some time um, to one of the shows just talking about that specific topic. What else you got? Yeah, thank you. All right, so I think uh, that might be it for today. Um, so we, uh, we've we been on for a good amount of time, and, again, we're going to try to make this a pretty regular segment. Mm-hmm. I think Fridays are a great time. Um, we're gonna maybe next time try to do a little earlier just because it seems like a couple people like they want to catch us on their lunch break, so that's kind of cool. Um, so we'll see, uh, but we're always going to post it. We're always going to repost it, so you guys always have access to this video. I'll post it on, on YouTube and things like that. But if you want to ask questions, try to catch us live. But even after we share it on our stuff, you can ask questions and, or direct message us. Um, and again, the big thing is if you have, we're always going to try to focus it mainly on conditioning, but we're open to other topics. And, and if we don't know the answers, um, either we'll go and do our own research or we'll bring on someone who, who does know the answers and, and basically ask him or her um, their thoughts. Because I think it's, it's all about it's kind of spreading your awareness, good knowledge, trying to get a lot of these fitness myths busted that uh, I think uh, leave a lot of people vulnerable to either losing money, time, um, or getting injured, even worse. Right. And so, again, anytime uh, we're open to suggestions or anything you may have uh, for us or want us to talk about, so reach out to us on our Instagrams, on our any of our social medias. You'll find me at Big Ass Muscles. And- <laughs> so I'm at Coach underscore Jerry with a J underscore. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's our Instagram, Facebook. You can just find us. Uh, uh, I have, I have a personal one, but I also have a, a, 
uh, business one. So you can just look me up by my name. Um, so yeah, so this is it for today. Um, hopefully everyone has a great weekend. It seems like we're going to hopefully get the sun out again. Yeah, super, I miss super. That sun. Anyone's on the East Coast, you guys don't know how good we have it out here. I mean, we don't take it for granted. Well, a lot of people do, but I don't. Uh, um, yeah, I did. <laughs> These last two days of rain have been like so miserable. It's like, gosh, it's December. Why, why are we raining out here? Um, yeah, and I have also said that I don't think I can live in the Oregon or Seattle yeah, states or Washington states because I enjoy my sun. Yeah. Unless Nike hires me, <laughs> <laughs> then I might have to give in. Who's that? I said unless Nike, oh, Nike, 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 Nike hires me on Oregon, then then maybe I'll, I I'll budge. I'll go to Baltimore, <laughs> Under Armour, Maryland. <laughs> All right, well, everyone, thank you. Uh, we always uh, appreciate you guys and, and ladies taking the time out of your busy days to yeah. just jump on, even if it's for a few minutes. The support is going to be kind of the crucial thing for us to kind of either one, get, get, I mean, think of if we want to get some big time names, some big time experts, um, they want to have an audience. So the bigger our audience gets, it's not, we're not getting anything financially. This is literally just us okay. doing it out of our passion. But the bigger our audience get, that allows us to be more marketable, to get other people who are experts, um, get on, on the podcast, on this little segment, and, and getting you all the best information possible. So please share it. Um, ask questions, tag uh, friends, uh, colleagues, anyone that's into kind of fitness and nutrition, that type of stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll be back uh, next Friday, um, anywhere from 12 to 1. Uh, but again, we're always going to repost it and we'll share it with everyone. Um, so again, we're out. And until next week, let's bump it, blow it up. All right. See you, everyone.